Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss large intestine. As the name suggests, large intestine, it is larger than small intestine, but it is not longer than small intestine. Small intestine is generally five to six meters long, whereas large intestine it is around one to one point five meters long. So large intestine starts with cecum, the cecum, then ascending colon, then transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, and anus. So if you see this large intestine, so here we can see a little bit of uh, duodenum can be seen, little bit of duodenum can be seen, so second part, third part, little bit of can be seen. The rest of the things here, it is totally occupied with the jejunum and the ileum. So it comes like this and then the ileum, it joins to the cecum. So you can see the large intestine, it makes a framework kind of structures where it accommodates the coil of the jejunum and the ileum. And at the end of the terminal ileum, this terminal ileum is joined to the cecum and there is a valve here that is called ileocecal valve. That is called ileocecal valve. So this ileocecal valve prevents the back flow, prevents the back flow of the food contents or the digestive materials from here to here, means large to small intestine. So coming back to large intestine, so you can see the cecum starts with a, this is a totally blind pouch, it's a dead end here. And there is also a small worm-like structure that's called vermiform appendix. So this is vermiform appendix. That's vermiform appendix. So this vermiform appendix, it can lie in sometimes 3 o'clock position or 6 o'clock position or 11 o'clock position. And the most common position of this vermiform appendix is always retrocolic, means behind the colon. It's mostly in the retrocolic position. So if we start with the cecum, this is six centimeter, around six centimeter long, six centimeter long, and it is more prominent in animals, uh, like for example in cows, they eat a lot of grass. So in if you see the cecum in the cow, it's a big pouch, it's giant in size in comparison to human beings. So cecum is, uh, is a big hub of bacteria, there are lots of gut flora is there, lots of bacteria is here, here. And it's very important for in digestion related because it can, there is so many things here uh, and it can help in digestion and also it is, plays a very important role in amoebiasis. The, as the food content moves to the ascending colon, the, mostly the food content is still are in semi-liquid form. So mostly the food content, uh, the bolus is mostly at, is mostly hardened on from the transverse colon onwards. So, and anatomically, if you see what is the blood supply, so the blood supply is basically here is by the by the superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery. So the superior mesenteric artery it comes out of the aorta and goes to the right, goes to the right. Okay, it starts at the L1 L1 level from the aorta, so superior mesenteric artery. And then it gives a branch also, a descending branch, the terminal branch that is called ileocolic artery. Okay, ileocolic artery. And then it gives a right colic artery, which is an ascending branch and then descending branch, right colic artery. Then it goes a middle colic artery, supplying the full the transverse colon. And uh, Left part of the colon and the descending colon, they are mostly supplied by the inferior mesenteric arteries, which arise from the aorta but from the L3 level. L3 level. Okay. So inferior mesenteric artery is the inferior mesenteric artery. It supplies the left side of the colon. So if you see the arterial supply of the large intestine, so it is supplied by right side by the superior mesenteric artery means i mean the branches of superior mesenteric artery and the left side by the branches of inferior mesenteric arteries now what are the function of large intestine so basically large intestine has it has a function of mixing the food material here that's called mixing there's a mixing of the food materials and then the large intestine has also a beautiful gut flora which is very very important so this gut flora helps in the digestion of the food helps in the also the absorption of the food materials and also this gut flora 
produces an important vitamin called vitamin K. So this vitamin K that we take in our diet, this is basically K1. And here this gut flora, the presence of the bacteria here, they can produce a lot of amount of vitamin K2, which is a blood clotting agent. And this is an important benefit, benefit of her having a lot of bacteria here in the large intestines. And also lots of vitamin B complex vitamins also they can produce. Along with that, the large intestine basically they are needed for absorption of sodium and absorption of water. It is a huge, plays a huge role in absorption of sodium and water here. That's why when water is absorbed more, the fecal content becomes very hard and results in constipation. And then when the water con absorption is less, it can produce signs and symptoms of like diarrhea. So uh, absorption of water and or secretion of water, it plays a very huge role in diarrhea or constipation. Then coming back here to the large intestine. So how the motility is there? What is the GI motility? It means large intestinal motility here. So if you see in the motility, it has three type of fung motility. So number one is hostel shuttling. Hostel shuttling. Hostel shuttling. So what is hostel shuttling here? So we see the large intestine is formed with hostations. These are all hostations. Okay. In the hostations also you see a ribbon-like thing which is called a tenia coli. So the, this is the basic difference between large intestine and the small intestine. So in the large intestine, there is no villi like small intestine and there is a strip of ribbon like material which is called as tenia coli which is called as tenia coli I write it here tenia coli so this tenia coli is the longitudinal strip of muscles which lies below the serosa so it is visible and it helps in the forward movement of the foot particles it helps in the forward propulsion because it is a longitudinal muscle okay so this tenia coli helps in the, there are three different types of tenia coli but they help in longitudinal propulsion of the foot material from here to here okay that is the basic difference between small intestine and large intestine though there are some also some fat materials here like appendages epiploic but we are, basically that function of that thing we don't know but we know the function of the tenia coli and it is the basic difference between small intestine and large intestine so small intestine has villi and large intestine has tenia coli. Small intestine basically they are meant to it absorption of nutrients. Okay, and when large intestine basically it is meant to it mixing of the food and also it has to give time so that sodium and water can be reabsorbed here. All right. So coming back to here, so this large intestine is fixed in two places. It is two places. So here you can see the lower pole of the liver is here. Lower pole of the liver is here. That's why you call this hepatic flexure. Hepatic flexure. And here it is present in the lower pole of the spleen, which is also this part is attached to the 11th rib, which is a ligament. And so this is uh, lies in the lower part of the spleen. So we call this part of the colon as a splenic flexure. Splenic flexure. So overall, it is, this is 6 cm long and the ascending colon is around 12.5 cm long. This is around 50 cm long. This is around 25 cm long. So overall, it comes around, around 1 to 1.5 meter, which is much, much shorter than small intestines. So large intestine, when we are talking about large intestinal motility, so number one is that it has hostile shuttling. So what is this hostel shuttling that when there is a food here, when the food here, then there is a contraction both sides. Both sides this will be contracted. Both sides it will be contracted. So now the food particle, that food bolus is, it is moving both in forward direction and in backward direction. Means it, the food particle is moving to and fro. Okay. So that is called hostel shuttling. So this is, during this hostel shuttling, this is, there is more and more mixing of the things. So basically here is mixing occurs in large intestine. So mixing of the things are happening here. At the same time, it's giving time so that sodium and water can be reabsorbed. Okay. So it's not moving forward. It's mixing here. Mixing is happening here. 
so sodium and water can be reabsorbed so more and more it's getting time for sodium and water reabsorption that is one type of motility here second also there is a background of peristalsis peristalsis which is throughout the GI tract because of the presence of myenteric plexus and the whole GI tract is innervated by vagus nerve and it is causing the parasympathetic nerve impulse and it's causing the forward motion of the digested food material. So there is a background of peristalsis and over that there is a hostel shuttling. Along with that, there's the most important one that is called mass movement. Okay, so what is mass movement? So mass movement is the propulsion of the whole of the food materials. There is no shuttling here. The mass movement is propulsion of the food material from one side to the other side. And it is important to notice that the mass movement is only present in the transverse colon and descending colon, not in the ascending colon or cecum. So when there is a mass movement, the colon totally empties itself and dump the, all the food material or the fecal material towards the sigmoid colon. And it is also important to notice that mass movement is not just like peristalsis, it is in a bigger scenario of peristalsis. And it's not so that it happens every hourly or in a minute. It's just uh, around five, four to five times in the whole day, you can say. So what happens? It is mass moment is also triggered by an important reflex called gastrocolic reflex, which you must know. So what is a gastrocolic reflex here? So any sort of presence of food in the stomach, when the food is present in the stomach. Okay, let me take the center position here. So when there is a food in the stomach, so when there is a food in the stomach, it will stretch the gastric mucosa, it will stretch the gastric lumen, and then it will send signal, it will send signal to the, our brain, to our brain. So from the brain, there is a downward impulse, and it comes to the parasympathetic nerve, all the vagus nerve, and it will stimulate the large intestine, it will stimulate the colon, it will stimulate the colon, to start with mass movement. So what is happening here? So when there is food in the stomach, the colon, this part of the colon, the transverse colon, is emptying its materials, emptying its digestive materials and the fecal matter and dumping into the sigmoid colon. So the reflex is started from stomach. So when a person eats something in the stomach, then at the same time, the mass movement is triggered and this colon has emptied itself. So that's why we call it the gastrocolic reflex. So this reflex is very, very important because many a times people complain of having an urge for defecation when they have something in the stomach. So many a times people have an urge of defecation when they start eating something or they're having a meal. Soon after the meal, they need to go to the washroom when their gastrocolic reflex is exaggerated. So for example, in cases of inflammatory bowel syndrome, IBS. So what happens in IBS? In IBS, this, when a person eats something, it is uh, very much related. It's not uh, a structural change in GI tract or a large intestine. It's basically a functional disorder. So in IBS, what happens? The gastrocolic reflex is quite exaggerated. And as soon as the person eats something, uh, soon after the meal he has an urge of defecation and it is quite it isn't found that it is related to stress it is related to depression and it is related to many other things like serotonin okay neurotransmitters so that's why the treatment of ibs is not actually any medicines it's mostly a behavioral therapy you can say so that's how the ibs came out and it is very much related to the gastrocolic reflex okay so sorry the gastrocolic reflex so when you say about GI motility, we got three things. One is hostile shuttling, second is peristalsis, third is mass moment. Okay, that is mass moment. It's a big moment, mass moment. And you have to note it that mass moment is only found in the transverse colon and descending colon. Okay, not in the here. Then after that, you have to note that in the large intestine, we have large numbers of bacteria in comparison to small intestinal bacteria. There is a typical gut flora which you know that gut flora secret vitamin K, so they are friendly enzymes, they are friendly bacteria, and they can secret vitamins, they also help in absorption, 
then production of gases especially like carbon dioxide methane and also they make small uh, they cleave the food particles into small chain fatty acids like propionate acetate which also helps in absorption of sodium and water so this gut flora is also helping in absorption also food digestion and they produce the immunity here and we also know that sometimes there is a concept called antibiotic associated diarrhea so when people take lots of antibiotic then this antibiotic can destroy the gut normal gut flora so when normal gut flora will be damaged then a particular bacteria called clostridium difficile okay this clostridium difficile get it starts dominating the whole of the section and it can present diarrhea so you, that is totally antibiotic related diarrhea when someone uses lots of antibiotic more than required use for example like cephalosporins penicillin group of antibiotics then quinolone group of antibiotics like ciprofloxacin then what happens this normal gut flora is damaged so when the normal gut flora is damaged then this bacteria clostridium difficile can start rising and can dominate and then it can cause lots of water secretion and plus it can decrease water absorption and it can cause diarrhea and that is called antibiotic associated diarrhea so these are the things that are associated with large intestine